Hey guys, I'm Dev, and on the road to Infinity War, an Avenger has to look their best, especially when they're the living, breathing embodiment of the American flag. I had some ideas about the uniform. No matter who wields the shield, Captain America is bigger than a superhero. He's a symbol, and his uniform is one of the most enduring comic book costumes ever created. So tight, with the confidence, I can feel the righteousness surging. Today we're going to take a look at how his outfit evolved with the times and see how Marvel turned wartime propaganda into big time profit. Let's talk about Captain America, Star, Stripes, and Spandex. In 1940, World War II had been raging on for a year, but the United States had yet to get involved. Before Pearl Harbor, most Americans turned a blind eye to the atrocities happening overseas. Even worse, a lot of not very fine people were straight up Nazi sympathizers who marched in the streets and had packed rallies at MSG. The comics industry shied away from politics for the most part, but that didn't stop two Jewish cartoonists named Joe Simon and Jack Kirby. They knew what was happening to their friends and relatives in Europe, and together they created a character who would embody the American dream and fight for freedom regardless of the political climate, and it all started in the comics. The most defining aspect of Cap's costume is just how little it's changed throughout the years. Today's Captain America doesn't look too different from Joe Simon's original sketch with one big round vibranium exception. Cap might be the most famous patriotic superhero ever, but he wasn't the first. The Archie Comics group beat him to newsstands with their character The Shield, and they thought Cap's weapon of choice looked a little too close for comfort. I hear you're uh, kind of attached. I took the liberty of coming up with some options. So for issue two, Kirby and Simon came up with the iconic round buckler, added a little more neck protection, and finalized the design that would last for decades. Artists added their own flair over the years, like John Cassidy's skelly armor and Rob Liefeld's unique anatomy. But his most radical design came just before his heel turn to Hydra. And even though it's a lot more subdued than his classic red, white, and blue, it's still undeniably capped. His costume is just like Old Glory itself, you can add a star or two here, but it never strays too far away from the iconic imagery, at least when Steve Rogers is wearing it. With that, let's take a look at some alternate attire. During the Watergate scandal in the 70s, Marvel introduced their own corrupt government conspiracy. Mr. President! Thanks. Turns out the president was in cahoots with a supervillain ring called the Secret Empire, not to be confused with last year's awful storyline. Once he learned the truth, Steve Rogers could no longer rep the red, white, and blue, so he took up the mantle of Nomad, complete with a brand new blue and yellow uniform with a plunging neckline. A super deep V, I would say. <laughs> and a cape that damn near got him killed because these heroes, they don't listen to Edna. Oh, he had a great look. Oh, the cape and the boots. No capes. You gotta listen to Edna. You gotta listen to Edna. Then in the 80s, after Ronald Reagan was transformed into a hideous snake monster, because life imitates art, Cap handed in his shield for a black and red outfit that should be familiar to anyone who's played Marvel vs. Capcom. Good work, soldier. Bucky Barnes took up the mantle after Steve was briefly killed in the aftermath of the Civil War, and he wore a shiny black Alex Roth design costume that made sense for a Cap with red in his ledger. Most recently, another sidekick answered the call of duty in 2014 when an aging Steve passed the shield to Sam Wilson, who added a patriotic paint job to his Falcon suit. Now, in the movies, it's mostly been Steve Rogers wearing the stars and bars, although Chris Evans' contract situation being what it is, Infinity War and its secret sequel might be the last time we see classic Cap in action. So before we say goodbye, possibly, let's look at silver screen Steve. Cap was the first Marvel character to make the leap to live action with a self-titled 1944 serial. It played fast and loose with Cap's origins, changing him to a district attorney named Grant Gardner, who fought an evil museum curator with a super weapon called The Vibrator. Yes, I know. I, I read the papers. Mm -hmm. The costume is spot on though, at least in the movie itself. The colors on the poster are all wrong, but seeing as the film was in black and white, nobody really seemed to care much. 30 years later, Cap exploded onto the small screen with two made-for-TV movies in 1979, played by none other than the dude from Space Mutiny, um, what's his name again? Big, McLarge, huge. <laughs> Smoke, man muscle. Eat punch beef. Hack blow fist. Blast. <laughs> Crunk knuckle. Around this time, another daredevil decked in red, white, and blue had captured the imagination of the country. Evil can evil. And Cap takes some obvious cues from the 70s stuntman, including his badass rocket bike. As for the costumes, the second movie is a little more comic accurate, but that still doesn't excuse the big motorcycle helmet and clear wobbly plastic shield. 
I can't rightfully hate on these movies too much. After all, it came out 10 years before a certain Cape Crusader changed the way we think about cinematic superheroes and inspired a new Captain America movie for the 90s. With the movie Batman setting box office records faster than you can say holy cash register, Hollywood is scrambling to bring more comic book heroes to life on the screen. Starring Matt Salinger, the son of Catcher in the Rye author J.D. Salinger, this direct-to-video movie has lots of problems from the Italian Red Skull to, of my aunt is on the table. to Cap's obsession with stealing people's cars Don't leave me out here. Wait a minute, what are you doing? But to their credit, the suit is pretty accurate, maybe a little too accurate. It looks awkward and extremely uncomfortable, and those cheesy rubber ears sewn into the mask aren't doing Salinger any favors. I give him a little credit. When is this, the 40s, you said? 70s, 79? This is 1990. 1990? <laughs> okay, this is bad for the 90s. I'm sure he tried his best, but for me, we didn't get to see the true Captain America on screen into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But before the MCU, there was the Ultimates. Mark Millar and Brian Hitch's alternate universe Avengers offered a very different vision of Captain America, and while the MCU adapted the classic Cap's idealistic personality, Shit! Language. they based his look on the militaristic uniforms worn by his ultimate counterpart. Look, I love the little head wings as much as the next guy, and I'm sure they're aerodynamic or whatever, but Ultimate Cap's streamlined helmet mask seems way more practical for the battlefield and the big screen. I love how his look evolves over the course of the first Avenger, from his Golden Age style USO outfit, to this improvised field uniform, and finally upgraded carbon polymer costume courtesy of Howard Stark. The next year brought us the first Avengers movie, and for everything it gets right, they really dropped the ball on Cap's costume. Well, Agent Coulson dropped the ball, but his heart was in the right place. Just The colors are a little too bright for me, like it kind of looks like a set costume and they forgot to unhide all the VFX layers because it looks kind of cartoony. It, I mean, it's fine, but take what you get. And the mask gives Grand Gustin a run for his money in the Superheroes with Giant Bulbous Heads department. It looks kind of dated next to the tactical uniforms of Hawkeye and Black Widow, but hey, sometimes people might just need a little old fashioned. Just like in Winter Soldier, where Cap starts out in this dark stealth suit inspired by the Steve Rogers Super Soldier costume from the comics, but after S.H.I.E.L.D. implodes, a fugitive Cap swipes his dusty old World War II uniform from the Smithsonian, and he can just do that because he hasn't aged or lost any muscle mass in 70 years. We all, we all dream. So do drugs, kid. <laughs> do, do drugs. Do PEDs, super steroids. Put yourself in a machine, get, get jacked up on juice. And... Just say yes. Yeah. Age of Ultron found a happy medium between the two, and it keeps the same style as the S.H.I.E.L.D. uniform, but added Cap's patriotic flair. In Infinity War, Cap seems to be wearing a tattered, desaturated version of the Civil War costume, and a triangular shield that looks like a throwback to its very first design. It might be the last outfit Steve Rogers ever wears, judging from the rumors, but then again, it's hard to keep a good Avenger down. Or Falcon and Bucky could just go, I'll take this, <laughs> as soon as he dies. All in all, when it comes to Cap, only one thing is for certain. No matter who's got the big ass A on their forehead. If you're gonna fight a war, you gotta wear a uniform. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Do you guys think Cap is gonna die in Infinity War? And if so, who do you think is gonna replace him? Is it gonna be Falcon or Bucky or the Winter Soldier or White Wolf or someone else entirely? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. Thank you.